Are uh, those that's uh, two male king eiders? This photo is actually taken just well three minutes walk from where I'm sitting right now. Um, I'm in Varda. It's uh, it's one of the furthest north uh, towns in uh, in uh, Norway. Uh, I'll show you a map fairly soon. Uh, so I, I was thinking I'm, I'm going to spend my eight minutes just whizzing through a whole bunch of slides, uh, kind of showing you, uh, showcasing the work that we guys are, are doing at Biotope, uh, which is the office that I run. We're an architectural practice. Uh, we're four people at the office. Uh, but we are a fairly uh, weird or strange architecture office in many ways, in that we we only work with nature conservation, um, outdoor living. Um, yeah, it's basically our our slogan or, or or ethos is actually connecting people with nature. That's what we do. So we're architects, but on the nature side of things, if you can say. Um, so I'll just show you a few birds because I'm I know we're all probably quite into birds. Uh, this is another bird just uh, taken just straight out outside the window from where I'm sitting. Uh, in Varda town. Um, these are puffins, which you also might know. They are from a nearby bird cliff here in Varda. Um, there are about 100,000 seabirds breeding at this nearby bird cliff. And uh, this is a Stellar's Eider. Uh, and again, it's one of these Arctic specialties uh, that you can see if you try to visit the Arctic. And um, this is a hawk owl. Again, another bird photo just taken. Uh, yeah not far from uh, my office here in, in Varda. And this is Varda. And I've been living here in this town since uh, 2009. I'm not from this place. Uh, I moved to Varda in um, 2009. Um, that was in order for me to kind of become an architect that worked solely with uh, uh, nature conservation type projects, like getting people engaged with nature, because that's what I am into myself, so I hope uh, the, the photos I'll show you, they, obviously this is quite different climate from in, I know we have Senegal here, this is I guess quite different, I mean this is about minus 20 Celsius at this image, you see all the buildings in the town get this white frostbite, and uh, getting shelter from the wind is one of the key things uh, if you want to go bird watching uh, this far north, so that's what I've been doing from the past um, past 10 years in uh, in Vardis actually been um, designing uh, nature nature shelters bird hides photography hides and uh, basically used a lot of lot of different ways to connect people locally with nature and also uh, in particular to invite people from all over the world to this region so uh, essentially to boost the ecotourism uh, side of things um, in the far north so this is my team at the office, and this is basically, I guess, I guess nature is my passion, uh, you can say, and then architecture is kind of my uh, profession, basically. And um, I remember uh, studying at architecture school, and you would see this image happening over and over again. It's essentially nature being uh, built away, and in many ways, I wanted to be the kind of architect who. Um, well, did not make architecture that happened at the expense of nature. I want to be the architect who makes thing, things happen for nature and to help people connect with nature. So when I was finished with architecture school, I basically started, I was, I was kind of fed up with architects, to be honest. And uh, what I did, I, I started traveling particularly, particularly around the UK, visiting UK nature reserves like this one. Uh, RSBB Minsmere. I've been to Slimbridge, by the way. I've also given a, given a talk there uh, a couple of years back. And what I found was uh, ecologists creating landscape architecture that I found to be hugely inspiring. I mean, essentially, you have ecologists acting as architects because this is designed nature. And I thought that was absolutely amazing in a world where we are losing um, nature in, in a very alarming and very rapid rate. I, I almost discovered, I felt like I actually as an architect discovered this way of creating and making nature. And I thought I need to be a, be a part of that scene and to be a part of um, designing how we promote nature. Because I thought, I mean, this is the, well, I, 
I'm just going back one slide, but kind of seeing this the, the innovative level of this kind of making nature, I, I thought that um, the making of nature shelters or bird hides would be as innovative. Um, it wasn't. It was kind of the box hide project, and it's it's a one one uh, what's it called one size fits all concept where it's just a copy paste everywhere. And uh, if you couldn't even afford the box, you would just put up a, a fence to stand behind. Or if you could afford the box and needed a tower, you would just put one box on top of the other box. And I thought I, I, I can, as an architect and as a nature enthusiast, I, I want to be a part of um, widening what a nature connecting architecture can be. And that's basically what I've been doing based out of this small town in the Arctic, uh, um, which was at the time when I moved to Varda in 2009, this town was ranked as the worst community in Norway for business. And so a key part of moving here was also using ecotourism and nature-based tourism as a means to create more development in the region. And uh, I thought the region had all the nature attractions it needed. Like this is a photo taken from the Hornia bird cliff, looking back towards Varda Island. And I thought if, we, if I can bring this experience to this kind of audience. I mean, uh, as we are, most of us are birders or very much into nature, we know that there are a lot of people who are willing and want to travel for unique experiences. And I basically decided I'm gonna bring as many people as I can to Varda and make bird watching and ecotourism a part of the scenery in Varda and what's happening in Varda. And for that, we've been using everything from uh, art projects like this, we're using street art, pieces in Varda town. It's a small fishing town of only 2,000 people. And all of a sudden you have these, these bird watchers popping up everywhere. Uh, we were setting up bird festivals. We were doing uh, bird ringing projects. We've been inviting a lot of bird artists, like world famous, unique bird artists and setting up local workshops for kids and setting up uh, bird ringing workshops for kids. Because I think all of these are, they are in themselves fantastic scientific methods to to kind of describe the natural world and to get a sense of the state of nature. But at the same time, it's also great tools to engage people. And of course, then the architecture, with this, which is kind of my specialty, uh, is to see how we can use architecture to engage people with nature. And one of the things in, in Varda and a town like uh, this is you need, you need shelter and you need to be protected from the elements in order to experience these things like uh, king either rafts so of 14,000 king eiders. Like this is image is a small section of. And, and again, just being in nature isn't all about observing birds or observing nature. It's also about spending time together and, and to, uh, yeah, to, to connect with nature and, and yourself as well. And I think that creates deep experiences that people will, well, it will make people love nature more basically. And that, that's kind of my goal is to create these small spaces and places where people can visit and stay and essentially connect with nature. And so we've been doing quite a lot of projects in, in, in the north. And after a while, we've, we've done projects now in more than 10 countries. Um, and I guess they're always based on the same idea. It's, it's, it's small pieces of architecture, but the nature, that's the big picture. That's the main attraction. Like this is a, a northern lights watching site and there is a bird cliff under it and uh, this is another cliff site in uh, in the north and i guess after many years in working with this area we've, we've kind of developed a call it a destination scheme or a concept for the region that has made it very easy for us to tell the story about what uh, Varda and what Varanger is to an international audience so in many ways what we've been doing has been to conceptualize um, well, what the region is and how we can present it to more people. And just to round off, um, I guess what we've kind of built over the past few years is an expertise in designing for special interests like bird photographers, landscape photographers, bird watchers, because they all have slightly different needs. And I don't think that you can design bird hides and it's a one size fits all project. I think kids visiting a nature reserve will have a different experience from a bird watcher or a bird photographer uh, visiting a nature reserve. 
And I guess after moving to Varda, our hope was that we would be invited to several countries around the world to kind of share our enthusiasm for designing for nature and for connecting people with nature and using architecture as, as that tool, toolbox in a way to connect people with nature. And that's basically what we've been do, doing now uh, for the past few years. This is, uh, these are projects from UK, uh, they're from Wallasey, uh, outside London. This is from, uh, from Saltam uh, in the north of UK. And, and then just yeah to round off very quickly now, I know the time is short, <clears throat> this is a photo I've taken of a redneck uh, fall rope uh, in this, uh, call it a prototype. You can see it, it's uh, on the top of this image. It's essentially just a plywood plate uh, that, that are folded, so it kind of becomes three-dimensional. And it's almost like a tur turtle shell, so you can kind of crawl very close to the birds in this little tidal pond you see in the background. And, and these are the kind of projects we do just to almost inspire ourselves and to create new, new ideas. And this... This concept developed into the concept you see below, which is the idea of having a floating photo hide to get you as close as possible to the to the birds in the area. And this, in this case, on, on uh, in, um, in the sea in in the north of Norway. And essentially, this project was built, and it's uh, with ballast tanks, and you can lower it so the windows completely meet uh, the surface level. And that's how you can kind of take these images of king eiders that you kind of didn't. Weren't, weren't able to take previously. And this is another kind of project. It's, we, we, we've called it an outdoor classroom. And the idea is basically to not teach nature in an indoor classroom, but rather to bring the classroom to the nature reserve. So what you're seeing here is a small amphitheater. There's a bird tower section on the top. And the idea is basically you bring the school class or the kindergarten to this area, and you will always have a sheltered place, sheltered from wind, sheltered from weather, and you can essentially be looking at what you're being taught about and there's exhibition space on the inside. And, and yeah, it's, again, just briefly to show you guys that uh, I think what we can do with architecture is actually quite a lot. And I hope this short presentation will give you at least a little bit of inspiration from, for what you guys can do to create this small minimalist type of architecture while maintaining that it's the nature that is actually the big attraction. Um, that's what I've been trying to do as well uh, from, from my part of the world. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys for inviting me to share, share this little story of what we've been doing. And it's, I'm privileged to be invited here with you guys as well.